Hello everyone, uh, as you've probably gathered from the title of the video. Today I will not be making a video on physics, I will still be making one on maths. And this video will be on the famous Euler identity. That is, in fact it is one of the most beautiful identities in math, if not the most beautiful. You combine the first five most famous constants that math, maths has to offer and you have them in one beautiful equation so the identity simply stated is e that is Euler's constant which is approximately equal to 2.718 raised to or it's not really raised to but yeah e to the i pi i here is of course i is equal to root of minus one pi as well 3.1415 and so on and so forth plus one is equal to zero well when you first look at this equation even beginning you, you don't even know where to begin to comprehend it first of all what does raising a rational number to an imaginary power even mean is exponentiation even defined for imaginary numbers and then how does all of that equal to minus or or how does that this expression over here how does that when you add one to it you get zero it really doesn't make sense and that's what it, the my 13 year old me had thought of as well when i saw this video when i saw a video about it for the first time well as time has gone by i have grown up i have learned more maths so well you could say that i have come to terms with it but I wouldn't say that I have completely understood all of what this equation implies. So before I actually begin presenting a proof of this identity, I would say that one thing to note is that we aren't actually raising e to any power. E, we are not multiplying e any definite number of times because it really doesn't make sense to raise a number to a negative power. As we'll soon note when we move on to the actual proof, this is this has something to do with Taylor series and also its representation on the Argand plane, that is the plane on which imaginary numbers are presented. On the x-axis you have uh, the real numbers and on the y-axis you have the imaginary numbers. So as to how exactly, oh wait, yeah, so you, here you have imaginary numbers. So as to how exactly this ties into this whole thing being equal to minus one we'll look at this later but before that uh, we'll look at a sh proof of this using calculus uh, in fact uh, we'll be using a taylor series here to derive this identity so while i wouldn't say that you need a complete knowledge about a taylor series i think it is best to have an at least an intuit intuitive understanding of it so i would suggest uh, watching the video that three blue and brown has made on it it provides a wonderful intuitive understanding to it and i also put the link in the description so i would suggest you watch that video first and then return to this so i'm going to assume you watch the video so generally speaking the taylor series for any uh, transcendental function that is a function which cannot be defined using any algebraic variables that is suppose you can write uh, uh, you can always write a function say y is equal to x square yeah but there doesn't ex exist uh, like a function of this form for say e to the x so what we can do is we can only do approximations for functions like these and this is where Taylor series comes in hand so for any function that needs to be approximated using a Taylor series we write it of the form of sigma all right we'll have i starting from i is from 0 to infinity and then we'll have f this this is the dash besides f we're going to put n over here uh, don't worry if this is going to get a bit complicated because i am going to explain it explain the entire expression of a this is the function of a and then we're going to put x minus a to the n by n factorial so we are going to sum up over all the terms of this form. Oh, whoops, I had this, there's a factorial over here. Yeah, so by n factorial, the whole term. So what this, this whole thing tells us is that first of all, let's look at this n over here. This represents the fact that we're going to take the nth derivative of the function at that point. So for, for i is equal to zero, we're just going to take 
the value of the function at that point and then for i is equal to 1 you can write the first derivative and so on now this function being of a represents the point about which we are trying to find approximate the function so for example if you want to find sin x a uh, value of sin x that is about 0 that is suppose you want to find say suppose sin 0 0.1 using this uh, Taylor series function we are going to try and approximate around it around the value 0 and so a in this case is going to be 0 similarly if we take a as 0 we are going to take x to the n instead so that is uh, if you already watched the video you, you know what this uh, this whole uh, summation means so I am going to begin begin the proof assuming that so I am going to close the, erase this all right so if we use this definition of any taylor series a, a polynomial for a transcendental function we'll get uh, e to the x oh hold on yeah so you'll get e to the x as 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 plus x cube by 3 factorial which is 6 and so this will keep on going like this and then as as we keep on adding more and more terms this approximation becomes more and more precise so at one point we can say that it equals e to the x but let's not play with the infinities over here and so we're going to do something sp special over here we are going to put uh, x is equal to minus i x okay so we're going to put e to the minus i x is equal to 1 plus i x plus i x the whole square divided by 2 plus i x the whole cube divided by 6 and so on and so forth so the effect of this is that we get 1 plus i x now remember i square is equal to minus 1 so we can write this as minus i square by 2 and i cube is actually equal to minus i so we can write this as minus i x cube by 6 and then we'll just add another term here to make it clearer for what i'm going to do later and so i raised to the 4 is actually 1 so we're going to write plus x to the fourth by 24 that is 4 factorial all right and then while we're at it we'll also write uh, the taylor series for or before we do that let's arrange it into something more well useful we will i'll write this as 1 minus x square by 2 plus x to the fourth by 24 having all the real terms in one bracket plus i x let's take i out so we get, we know that this is, these are the imaginary terms hold on mm, yeah so we have x minus x cube by 6 and this continues all right so now we will write uh, the Taylor series for cos x and sin x and I want you to notice closely as to what terms we get okay so sin x using the definition of the Taylor series that we have above will be written as x minus x cube by 6 plus x to the 5 by 5 factor that is 120 and so on and so forth and cos x on the other hand will be written as 1 minus x square by 2 that's a, that's a 2 oh god that's a 2 so plus x to the 4 by 24 and so on and so forth now do you notice something yeah i mean you probably noticed it uh, the expression that we have for cos x is completely identical to what we'll get over here and the expression for sin x oh yeah sorry my bad the expression for sin x is completely identical to what we get over here and the expression for cos x is completely identical to what we get over here so e to the ix 
is actually equal to cos x plus i sin x. All right. And this result is actually commonly known as Euler's formula, Euler's formula, and it has a lot of uses in complex analysis. But if we substitute x is equal to pi here, we get an even more beautiful form. So e to the i pi, so you can see what you're doing here, e to the i pi is equal to cos pi plus sine pi. And that is of course equal to e to the i pi is equal to minus 1 and e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. And here it is. So this was the Euler's identity. As you can see, we derived it quite easily using calculus, but what does this actually mean? So please do note that I'm not actually describing it formally. Uh, half of the knowledge that, in fact, half of the knowledge in this video has been from the Wikipedia page and half of what I've actually studied. So please do take everything that I do right now with a grain of salt. So I'm going to draw the argon plane over here. That is the plane on which all complex numbers can be represented. So here is the argon plane. We have uh, imaginary numbers on the y-axis. So I'm just going to write I M over here, and we have real numbers on the x-axis. So suppose I want to represent a uh, number a is equal to one plus four i, right? So I'm going to take 1 on the x-axis and 4 on the y-axis and I'm going to pinpoint the number over there. But there is a more elegant way of doing this. In fact, this formula that we have over here, the complete form is actually with an R over here. And we're going to put this entire thing in a bracket. So this R over here is actually the modulus of the unit vector that comes from the origin of this argon plane. So if we take the value of this one of, of this as one, the, we the we get the origin expression that we had derived earlier. So what this one actually represents is that it's going to be the radius of the unit circle that is that we get by like describing this all around this plane. So suppose I had a circle over here. So this is a circle, okay yeah so this is a circle and we have a rate we have our radius over here so we're going to take the value of this as one okay so we get this expression again over here so what i what is significant to realize over here is that the x in the formula actually represents the angle this unit vector of the radius actually describes so if we take different values of x, you'll see the different results we get, okay? So I'm going to write this again over here, just so it's easier for me to explain. So we'll take x is equal to 0. So we get e to the 0 is equal to, e to the i0 is equal to cos 0 plus i sin 0. So basically we'll get 1 is equal to 1, which just means that, we, that our thing is over here, okay? So what happens when we do e to the i x that is I know and we put x is equal to pi by 2. If you put x is equal to pi by 2 that would correspond to this place and ch check what result we get. Cos pi by 2 would be 0. So e to the pi by 2 is actually equal to i sine pi by 2 that's just i. So it's equal to i. And that is exactly the point that I'm pointing here because remember that the modulus of this unit vector or its length that is is one so if it were over here it would act directly correspond to this point over here and that point is i and think what happens if we put pi right e to the i pi would come as cos pi is minus one and sine pi is zero so we'll get minus one and that is exactly the point that's that will correspond to that is over here that will it will be minus one and so on and so forth if we put three pi by two we'll get minus i over here and if we put 2 pi we'll come we'll do a whole circle 
zero here and you can keep continuing in fact it has infinitely many solutions so that is all about Euler's identity and how we derive it uh, so I hope you found this informative I hope you learned something new and we'll meet again in the next video